Hey, my name is Fernando and I'm a technical marketing manager here at GitLab. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to deploy the GitLab Kubernetes agent with limited permissions. Now, let me talk a little bit about the Kubernetes agent. It's an in-cluster component used for solving GitLab and Kubernetes integration tasks in a secure and cloud native way. Here's a little bit about the workflow. So we have our Kubernetes agent running within the cluster and it's looking at a configuration. So it constantly grabs that configuration to see what it should deploy. So it watches the changes on the actual manifest that's defined within the agent configuration. And it looks for changes within that manifest file and it applies them to the cluster. So uh, in this workflow, you can see a developer is pushing code changes the developer is updating the manifest and once those changes are detected, then it'll apply them to the Kubernetes cluster and it keeps doing this in a continuous manner. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through the flow of actually deploying the GitLab Kubernetes agent onto your cluster and then configuring the manifest files for it to deploy with limited permissions, meaning that we're gonna scope deployments to only be able to happen on certain namespaces. Now let's get started. So the first thing I'm gonna do is create a cluster. I go and create a GKE standard cluster. And let's just name this Fern GitOps. And let's just put see okay so if I look at the node pool in the nodes I'm just going to select e2 e2 medium and I'm gonna go ahead and create this standard cluster so creating and we'll just wait for that to go ahead and create so we're taken back to this view and you can see that for in GitOps ABC is being created so we'll leave this here and what we're gonna do is we're going to use this cluster to deploy the agent onto, as well as to manage any deployments. So now within the project, we're going to go ahead and create the configuration for the Kubernetes agent. So in order to do this, we can just go to the web IDE. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a new directory called dot gitlab slash agents slash and then we're going to give our agent a name so i'm going to call it fern agent and within this directory we're going to add a new file and that new file is going to be called config.yaml now what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and copy the actual yaml specification from the blog which is shown in the links on the description and you can see here that it defines our manifest project. So where are we loading manifest files from? So this can be any project, but for the sake of simplicity, we're gonna store it in the same project that we're using. So this is gonna be our project ID and it's gonna pick up the manifest files from a folder named manifests, which we haven't created yet and we'll create in a later section but it'll pick up anything with the .yam or JSON extension. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and add that project ID. So let's grab it from the actual project. So in order to do that, I go to my actual project and I go here to project ID and just copy it. And Go ahead and replace that and let's commit it and commit that to master. And now I'm going to go back to the project and we see that the pipeline is running. In the meanwhile, we can go to infrastructure, Kubernetes clusters. We can go to the GitLab agent managed clusters 
and we can click on this button that says integrate with the GitLab agent. So here we can go ahead and select an agent. We're going to go ahead and select for an agent and click next. Now here's a token that we need to save for when we actually deploy the agent onto our Kubernetes cluster with limited permissions. Let's go ahead and save that off. Note that I'm not using the recommended installation method because I don't want the standard configuration. I want to go ahead and change this configuration to have limited permissions. Now that I've saved the token within my notes, I'm going to go ahead and open a terminal. Now that I've gone ahead and copied my token, I'm going to go ahead and open a terminal window and let me echo my token. So that's my token and now I have it saved within the terminal. Now I'm going to go ahead and scope my kubectl commands against my GKE cluster. So I just go back to GKE and you can see my cluster has finished being created and I click connect. I go ahead and copy these command line access commands. Go back to my terminal and apply them. And now if I just do a kubectl get namespace, we're here in a brand new Kubernetes cluster. Okay, so now we're going to create a namespace for the Kubernetes GitLab agent. So let's do a kubectl create namespace and I'm going to call this namespace the GitLab Kubernetes agent. And this will, this will be where we're going to deploy the agent and everything it requires. Now we're going to go ahead and create a secret to store the token. So this is done by running the kubectl create secret command and we're going to create a generic secret under the GitLab Kubernetes agent namespace which we just created. We're going to call it GitLab Kubernetes agent token and the key is going to be token and this is going to be our value. So we go ahead and press enter and we can see that the secret has been created. Now we can go ahead and actually deploy the Kubernetes cluster with limited permissions. So I'm going to go ahead and create a file called agentk.yaml and I'm going to copy over the deployment YAML from the blog. So let me go ahead and copy everything and I'll go over this for you. So here I'm going to create a namespace called dude, which I'm going to give the Kubernetes agent access to. I'm going to create a namespace called na, which I'm not going to give the Kubernetes agent access to. I'll create the service account for the Kubernetes agent, the deployment, which will be the actual application. And what we're going to do is we're actually mounting the, the token that we just created as a secret. And we're giving cluster level roles to write and read config maps within the cluster. But we are going to give namespace level roles for reading and writing on the namespace GitLab Kubernetes agent, as well as the namespace dude. So let's go ahead and apply this. So if I do kubectl apply dash f agent k dot yaml. we'll see that everything has actually been deployed. Now let's make sure that the Kubernetes agent is actually running. For this, we run kubectl get pods on the Kubernetes agent namespace. And we can see that it is running. So now let's go back to the project and create the actual manifest files. 
So using the web IDE, I'm going to go ahead and create a new directory called manifests. And within that directory, which we see here manifests, we're going to add a couple YAMLs for our deployments. So I'm going to go ahead and copy those from the block. So let's do do the YAML. And this will deploy the Nginx deployment on the namespace dude. And I'm going to create a new file called na.yaml. Create the file. And we're going to try to apply that same Nginx deployment to the na namespace. So Let's go ahead and commit this. We can commit it to master. Go back. We'll wait the, for the deployment and then I will go back to my terminal. Now that we're back at the terminal, we can go ahead and see if there's anything running on the dude namespace. So let's do kubectl get pods dash n dude. And we can see that the Nginx deployment is there. So now let's run the same thing on NAW. And we see that there's no resources within the NAW namespace. So let's take a look at the logs within the Kubernetes agent. So here is the pod. Let's go ahead and get the logs. So kubectl logs. N and Kubernetes agent. And here we can see that the Nginx na is forbidden. And we can also see that the dude deployment is available. So there you go. That's deploying the GitLab Kubernetes agent with limited permissions. Be sure to check out the blog as well as the links in the description for more information. Thanks.